Who knows you best? Some of you may think this is obvious. Of course, you know yourself better than anyone else. But others credit their spouses with sometimes knowing them better than themselves. Even children up to the age of 10 or 11, a lot of them, when you ask who knows you best deep down inside, they will say their mother. So this idea of what we call privileged access, the idea that you know yourself better than anyone else, this is also a somewhat tenuous and relative idea. We certainly know a lot about ourselves, but we might also be biased, correct? So although we have lots of information about ourselves, that might not be accurate information. You can answer questions about yourself pretty quickly, but is self-knowledge accurate? Maybe people fool themselves. We certainly see this with other people. Um, at the uh, start of this topic, you were asked to rate your ability to get along with other people. Uh, now I could look at your answers, but I don't know you, so I can't tell for sure whether your answer is correct or not. So this is a challenge for psychology. How can we tell if people's answers are correct or not? Uh, we can ask things that we can measure directly, such as how much they weigh, and then we can actually weigh them. I think we'd be finding some difference there. A lot of people say they weigh a little bit less than what the scale might tell us. Uh, but there's another way in terms of psychology research that we can get at this question. We can look at a large set of answers. For example, I asked you all to rate yourself in comparison to the average student. Uh, this kind of thing has been done repeatedly, and what we find is that Nearly all the students will relate themselves as better or far better than average. Uh, in several giant studies, there was hardly anyone in the United States, uh, I believe less than 1% rated themselves as below average in getting along with others. So everybody is above average? One option in, in one of the scales was, are you in the top 1%? 25% of the students rated themselves as being in the top 1%. The top 1% really can't uh, possibly include 25%, so some of those people were overestimating. We don't know which ones. Uh, maybe people have slightly different criteria, so maybe 2 or 3% could make a legitimate claim to be in the top 1%. But you know, somebody does have to be below average. So put this way, the average person thinks that he or she is above average. And by definition, the average is not above average, the average is average. So, there is this evidence that, broadly speaking, self-knowledge is not entirely accurate, but systematically distorted and in a rather favorable manner.